Tim, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this. Uh -huh. um, I'm looking here on GarageBand as yeah. we're recording this, yeah. and I'm looking on the track for that uh, for that opening music of yours, which is awesome, by the well. way. And there's a symbol on this track, and it doesn't exist in any others. And I don't even know what this symbol means, but it's a symbol I've seen a million times. But you know what? It means something new to me now. Do you know why? <laughs> why? Because it's the symbol of danger. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's the danger Will Robinson symbol oh, that the, yeah. the, the robot does. Oh, is that, space. is that, is it? It, it oh is my God. exactly that symbol. I'm looking at it and I'm like, that, that, this is creepy. Wait, this and is I really are creepy. Both seriously into the, you, what is that, Netflix? It's Netflix, Netflix, man. Netflix, Lost in you, Space, dude. And you, you know, you're, you're the one that told me because I, I said, we have to fill everybody in on this. First, if you have not yet watched Lost in Space on Netflix, just do it. Yeah. Just do it. No matter how dumb you uh, remember that original 19, what, 60s or 70s? 65. 60s. 65. Series was, you were correct. That, that series was dumb. Oh, wow. It was just, you know, the, look, the original show was just every episode of the original show. And we were just talking about this. Every step, Irwin Allen said it'll be a Swiss Family Robinson in space, which, of course, it never was. And the 1998 movie wasn't that either. Everybody yeah. kind of lost track of that was the original idea. Let's sort of take this classic story of a family and survival and blow it out into the space age. Uh, but they never actually did that. The new series does that yeah. for the first time. It's finally honoring that premise. And they went back to the original unaired pilot and they developed it from that. And I think it's just genius. It's beautiful what they're doing with this show. The so cast. many people doing excellent work, including oh. uh, Parker Posey uh, playing Dr. Smith, uh, kind of. So good. And, and she is just so good. I thought it was going to be so bad. I was like, do we really need Lost in Space again? And you told me. I was sitting here said, watching. You, you and... told me. You said, dude, watch it. You're going to love it. It's just it. It's firing on all cylinders, and it, uh, it's a terrific show. Yeah, very, very, very bright. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it's thinking. You know what's clear? Those people watched uh, that original series yeah. uh, and, and sort of uh, incorporated everything that was nutty and messy and yeah. incorrect and wrong about it. Yeah. Uh, reversed all of that uh, and made themselves a good television program. What I, what I really love about it is – that it is, uh, as Swiss Family Robinson is to a great extent, it's all about the girls. It's all about the women. Yeah. Uh, to a great extent. You Without know. diminishing uh, the men. No, uh, not it, at all. But it's about, it's, it's about the women. Uh, these women have, uh, they, well, they're all smart. Yeah. Uh, uh, but they're all different. Um, and they have, uh, um, they, they are self-actualizing women. They're yeah. not waiting for men or boys to tell them or to let them do anything. Particularly and, Maureen. And in point of fact, I think they also realized that Dr. Smith, who was not an original part of the concept, but who sort of took over the show because Jonathan Harris is such a ridiculously oversized overactor, um, and that's where it went astray. Yeah. They figured, okay, we still have to obviously integrate Dr. Smith because the character precipitates so much of the drama, but let's face it, Dr. Smith on the original show, Jonathan Harris notwithstanding, was a girl. <laughs> he was. He just... was a girl, and, <laughs> and so you could, and you could get away with that in 1965. And, and you could. So what they did was they replaced him with a girl, but they didn't make her a girl. Girl, yeah, yeah. That and see, that's really smart. Um, and uh, and I, they took the notion of a sociopath. Yeah. And they let it. And they, and, and and they and they let it play. Oh, uh, completely. Uh, but they, but they don't. But they don't make it. She's not insane. No. Uh, she has no. reasons. She has a worldview which she articulates at several points, one in particular. And uh, even if you don't like her, even yeah. if you don't share her worldview, you do have to give her props. Oh, you have to go, that ain't crazy. No. <laughs> that ain't crazy at <laughs> no. all. No. <laughs> yeah, but there you yeah. go. Oh, yeah. man, good stuff. Anyway. Anyway. How, how we get on that? Crazy. It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'm just, I, I, it's, you know, there are, there's a lot of junk on Netflix but you, you you sift through it and you, you you do find some good stuff. Now I gotta now I gotta watch that western. What's the western called? Uh, uh, you're talking about Westworld? Or that's no, HBO? no, 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 no. There's a western. Oh, the one with um, uh, Michelle uh, Dockery. Yeah, and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah which, yeah, which I've heard about that. Face my Facebook feed keeps uh, keeps punching me in the face with clips from it. It looks amazing. So, uh, is uh, that Godless? Is that the one? Yes, that's it. Yeah, Godless. Godless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, and by the way, the other little uh, little story of the week. Have you heard about the projection issues with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Solo? No, the Star Wars film. I mean, I know so, there are a lot of issues with Solo, box well, office being one well, of them. But what about a, projection? This is a visual issue. So uh, our our guy who uh, who was the DP, um, the uh, he was uh, 
we, we, we love him to death. The um, He was DP for uh, the... Uh, on Solo? Uh, on Solo. Anyway. Oh, let me get it real quick. If we he, need he, to did, know. He, he did the, the Ed Zwick film, and he's, he's done... Uh, oh, terrific DP. He's, he's you know, a ma- wizard with light. So uh, he's, he's a, he's, he articulates a lot of stuff with low light. He's been really heavily experimenting with low light situations, uh, especially with digital, because he can get apparently more he can get richer light sensitivity out of digital than he's ever been able to get out of film mm. so uh that's why solo has so many sequences especially when you're you're in uh lando's lair and everything is very dark he's really he, he really tried to make certain parts of it very very dark very low light bradford brad yes Bradford, of yes. course. Arrival and, and, yeah. and Selma. Yes, and, Arrival, and, yes. And, and, so, you know, so. Most violent year. Bradford Young. Bradford Young. Amazing. Yes. Amazing cinematographer. So, he, he's experimenting with a lot of low light, but it's revealing just how many theaters are not up to snuff. Their, their projection standards are lacking because they've, they've, their, their, their bulbs or their projectors are not bright enough. And a lot of people are saying, I can't see anything on the screen. So interesting. Yeah. But it took it took it, it took this film to expose that there are literally hundreds of screens that are not meeting uh, standards for for uh, for bulb brightness. Not enough lumens. Not enough either. Actually, the bulb not bright enough to project right. not strong enough to project that movie at the Correct. brightness to, the, to be projected at. Even though he deliberately deliberately thought about, That's right. uh, who, who, who shot uh, uh, The Godfather. Uh, uh, Gordon Willis, they, they same him, they, deal. They, they called him the Prince of Dark. That's right. He's one same of those kind of deal. Guys. And uh, so he did. He pulled one of those. He pulled one of those. But because the uh, uh, proje- in theaters, people have been just they're cheap. They're just but it's cheap. not him. It's these theaters. It's the theaters. Ah. The, and and there's a guy who uh, there was a whole thing on IndieWire about this. There's a guy who works for some operation who is you know he's a tech guy. He's an engineer. And he's mad about this, and he's not naming any of the theaters because he wants to contact the technical personnel at the theaters mm-hmm. and raise the issue with them. Which is a classy thing to do, but I still want to know the theme. You know what it is? Because it could be something as cheap as not changing the bulbs on proper schedule. Could be. Because they do diminish over, yeah. over, over, over but hours. There's, but there's really no excuse. And, and there's, also, there's also the issue of, you know, there, there's engineering. There's math involved in this, which is a certain brightness of bulb, a certain throw to the mm-hmm. screen, mm-hmm. and a certain kind of screen. The screen has to have a certain reflectivity as well mm-hmm. that matches the bulb. I mean, all you've got – all these things have to sort of work in tandem. But let's face it, if, you're, if you have digital projection, those are cheap bulbs. Yeah. That bulb is going to cost you like $40, $50 tops, may, maybe, maybe $100 or $200 tops, as opposed to those insane bulbs that 35-millimeter projectors mm-hmm. have, which cost like, like $1,200 to replace one of those bulbs. They're insanely expensive. Yeah. They would last for years. Those arc them, bulbs. Yeah. Yeah, those, those arc, arc bulbs. Yeah. The, the, those things, I mean, they last for years, but they're crazy expensive, and they burn super hot, and they will destroy your eye, your, your optic nerve if you don't <laughs> if you have, look at them. It's, it's like, like the, the sun. sun. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, I mean, come on. You're already saving money just from the, the, the standard alone. So. Interesting, though, that uh, this was revealed. Yeah. Uh, you know, by With this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything's too bright these days. Yeah. Everything's shot just straight up bright. Nobody does that thing anymore. So Bradford Young is going in the Gordon Willis direction. He's trying to see... You know how far he can take it down, how far he can pull things out of the shadows, where he can really get that range, which I think is cool. Oh, absolutely! Stop it down yeah. for a little bit. You're right. Everything has been shot. Fl- oh, it, and it started with that dead gum, 48 frames per second. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it started before that, but yeah. that was a, that was like the apex of it. That movie, uh, it was like uh, it was relieved from the screen yep. and lit with just a, a 10,000 K art like from the front. A high key light, yep. and it was just the most horrible thing I've ever seen. Yep, boy, oh, indeed, boy. indeed. All right, well, I'm going to start. I'm going to kill out some uh, some anime here. We've got a whole lot of really great anime this month, uh, this week in particular. Some really great stuff. Cinedime, we've you know, it has been kind of Cinedime was a big, big deal, and then they kind of went silent a little bit, uh, and uh, they're starting to really kind of crank up some stuff again. I'm really happy about this. So Cinedime and Rooster Teeth are putting out. Volume 5 of RWBY on Blu-ray and DVD and digital, but the Blu-ray is what we're talking about here, which is great. This is a terrific combo pack. Uh, it comes with a, a, a really cool uh, like sampler of the manga, 32 pages long, which is more than just a sampler. 
And uh, the if you if you haven't followed the the whole RWBY storyline, there's no way that I'm going to be able to kind of catch you up on it right now. Uh, but it's it, you know it just it, it's one of the better mythical worlds. It's got uh, it's got a really cool you know it's I, I love it when Japanese anime goes girl <laughs> yeah. when they just when they go all girl I love it and uh, the uh, it, it's there, there's a really cool mythical thing here centered around Haven Academy and uh, the characters are just really really well developed and it's and it's just beautiful animation it's terrific. Uh, we also have from Mill Creek we're going to talk about more Mill Creek later but. Um, Mill Creek has also gone a little bit anime. They've got a an anime three series collection uh, for a bargain price on DVD. If you are if you're looking to kind of introduce yourself to the world of anime, this is not a bad way to do it. Uh, the three series here are uh, Kurozuka, Ultraviolet Code zero forty four, and Viper's Creed. Now, none of these are like top tier anime. I wouldn't say that any of these are the, among the greatest anime ever done. Uh, but they're all really solid, and they're interesting, and this is about 14 hours worth of anime in three different series, and they sort of touch on all the different, uh, the different themes and aspects of it uh, that, you know, if you're wondering, am I an anime person, do I really want to dip my toe into this without buying one particular, like, without, you know, I'm not going to go out and buy, you know, uh, this particular series and then not like it. No, this is a sampler. So mm. This will... This will kind of get you out of dry dock, and, and you'll be able to figure out if this is your thing. Uh, totally weird, completely bizarre, not at all how I, sh- how I feel about this. Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. Um, just look at now. Look at the artwork, Tim, and tell me what you think. What does that make you think of? Well, you know, the, the things we can't talk about on this podcast, but it's literally <laughs> a satellite girl and a milk cow. And what are, you, what are you referring to specifically? I'm referring to the fact that the milk cow has hair, yeah. has a hairstyle, the big yeah. giant milk cow that's standing on his, on his feet. Uh, I'm yeah, talking like about dude, the fact, looks like a beetle. I'm talking about the fact that his ear is tagged. Oh. And I'm talking about the fact that there is a an anthropomorphic roll of toilet paper standing next to him with legs and face and arms. Yeah, that's just insane. This is like something that belongs on on Adult Swim. Yeah. Uh, this is it, it's 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 really kind of weird and trippy and um, like those French fries. Uh, yeah. What was that with the, the, the yeah the the, the, the yeah. anthropomorphic food and all that nonsense. So. Uh, Basically, there's this is it's like science fiction and fantasy, and uh, who knows what else. But it's just really, really strange. So, um, I don't know how to tell you anything else. It's Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. She turns into Satellite Girl, and then it's just weird. The whole thing. Uh, it's it, there's a lot of, of magic in this thing, and a lot of lore. And I've got to believe it's somehow rooted in mythology. Um, it is an interesting. It's an interesting trajectory, but you you gotta you gotta be pretty seriously into this stuff. Uh, it's just weird. <coughs> Kabuki Boo, the complete collection, twelve episodes on two discs. This is uh, Sente from section uh, twenty three. Um, feudal Japan, uh, you know, uh, it represented in Kabuki. This is you know, it, I I don't know if anybody's ever seen Kabuki theater in our listenership. Uh, I've seen Kabuki once. Have mm. you ever seen Kabuki? I love Kabuki. So Kabuki is. I saw some Kabuki. Uh, see, that's right. You've yeah. actually seen it in Japan. Yeah, My goodness, yeah, yeah, that must yeah, have been yeah, a trip. Ninety four. Yeah, that was great. I saw it when I was a kid here in Little Tokyo, and I and I had to imagine that like L A Kabuki is kind of like <laughs> not top tier, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's it's like it's this. We're gonna do this for for white people. Let's just make <laughs> them feel. I don't know. It's just weird. But um, it, it's well, there's well, something Gilbert very and Sullivan Kabuki that kind sure. of sure yeah. Uh, so anyway, the the thing about Kabuki is it's um it is Kabuki in anime is um a whole different deal. Kabuki live is really dramatically very very interesting, and I actually almost like it in many respects better than Peking Opera if you're talking about a particular style of, of Asian performance art. Um, it's a little bit more accessible, uh, at least to, to Western dramatic sensibilities, but it still kind of has one, it's still connected at the, uh, at the hip to things like uh, Peking Opera and, and other, other ancient forms of Asian stage performance. In any case, um, Kabuki Boo is uh, an anime tale that sort of uh, uses that backdrop to spiral out a uh, what is one of these kind of high school dramas. And it's kind of half an, a tribute to Kabuki and half a way of reinventing the Japanese anime high school drama. And 
I, I'm not sure how I feel about that either. It's uh, it's really interesting. It's really an- interestingly animated. Can't say that I really connected to it in any great way, but um, it's it's definitely taking anime into a new direction. Uh, as long as we're talking about kids in school and that whole thing, uh, one of the better ones in recent years uh, that I have seen is the uh, Anonymous Noise series, which uh, is, has a, is is really highly stylized, has a lot of great action, and uh, it, it's you know kind of more the same in some respects, but compared to most of that stuff, uh, you know most of the high school politics and uh, kids are cooler and and you know uh, more awesome than uh, than the adults. Uh, this one is this one's one of the better ones. I actually like it. Uh, it. It was fun to watch, even if I didn't fully understand what was going on. Uh, among the, the as long as we're talking about girl centric fantasy stuff, uh, I'm gonna say this is not quite as awesome as RWBY, but uh, Sword Oratoria is 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 pretty darn good as well. Um, this is part of the uh, Is It Wrong universe. Uh, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Uh, Kind of, this is somehow connected to that, and uh, I am not immersed enough in that universe to know exactly how all of these characters interlock, interlock and interrelate. Uh, but uh, Sword Oratoria is uh, on its own. If you're if you don't try to figure out, you know, all of the connective tissue, it's still pretty great. Twelve episodes on this one, and uh, a lot of fun. And then a whole bunch of stuff from uh, Funimation. Uh, let's try to go through this as quickly as we possibly can. A great and terrific box set of My Hero Academia Season 2 Part 1, which continues the, uh, the, 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 uh, the superhero battle here, which is a little bit Avenger-y. Uh, you know, it's Class 1A fighting the League of Villains. And uh, if you're enjoying the Avengers, uh, then you will by all means absolutely enjoy this as well. You will especially, especially enjoy the uh, the characterizations, and uh, you know you'll enjoy this UA Sports Festival. It's 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 you know it uh, it's one of the it's it's a fun universe. Uh, Ace Attorney uh, Part Two is also out in a Blu-ray DVD. These are all Blu-ray DVD combo packs, by the way. Every single one of them uh, that is also out, and uh, is the story of Phoenix Wright, Defender of Justice, picks up where uh, you know Part One ended and uh, continues to bring this really cool Japanese take on, uh, on, on the legal drama and anime. Uh, if you like the sports stuff, all out, exclamation point, exclamation point. Make sure there are two exclamation points. It's part of the title. All out, part two, uh, continues the rugby aspects of the uh, Kanagawa high rugby team. So it's a little bit of the high school thing coupled with the sports thing. And um, it's a little bit parochial, but still enjoyable. Uh, the complete series of uh, e- e- of LD Live, that's lowercase e l, uppercase d live. Uh, the complete series. That's uh, again a combo pack. Uh, this takes place in a middle school, and it is basically a uh, a science fiction fantasy about this kid who's recruited by, recruited by a uh, space force of uh, of law enforcers, and uh, on top of that. He discovers that he's there's like this alien creature that's living inside him and talking to his head. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but but somehow it, the animation is really sharp and it's it's still really entertaining. I love it. Uh, we also have a live action adaptation of Parasite. That's Parasite P A R A S Y T E. Uh, Parasite parts one and two, the live action version, um, which is you know basically like a, a alien parasite invasion stuff. Uh, it's you know what? It's um, it's okay. It doesn't work as well in live action as it does in anime. I gotta say. Uh, Sugumomo, the complete series, is uh, it, it, I, I may take a little bit of research to get into this one. Um, this uh, this is a fantasy world, and uh, there's all kinds of magic and Harry Pottery kinds of rules going on that I never made much sense of. So that was hard to get into. Um, I'm going to do my best to pronounce this one. Boy, this is really hard. This is uh, this is also middle school politics in Tsukigakure, T-S-U-K-I, and then I'm sure you can fill in the rest. Uh, Tsukigakure. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, basically kind of junior high politics and life and, uh, and these kids, you know, in love and romance and friendship, and it doesn't go into any uh, fantastic places. There's not a lot of genre genre work going on here, so uh, don't expect any any genre stuff. Um, and then we also have uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, which is completely insane. It is entertaining. It is funny. I'm not sure how much of this is supposed to be funny. 
Uh, this is Japanese humor really at its most obscure and weird. Uh, when you wind up having people like as drag having dragon ser- like literal dragons work for you, they're your servants. I it's, love it. It's like I mean, it's a literal dragon maid. It's not like oh, she's a maid who's like a dragon. No, it's a dragon that's a maid. It's <laughs> totally bizarre. It's really weird. They when they when they take their drugs, man. The Japanese do not mess yeah. around. Uh, and then uh, this one is a whole lot of fun. Show by Rock season two. Um, Think of this as the Japanese anime version of Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space. That's all I can say. Josie and the Pussycats <laughs> in Outer Space, one of my all-time favorite shows. I love that. Uh, it was the best. And uh, this is about, you know, the, the, it's not even Josie and the Pussycats. This is Plasmagica, the girls of Plasmagica. <laughs> and, uh, and they have to save Sound Planet. It's just so, it's just so off the wall. It's so brilliantly bizarre and cool. And uh, that's it for all of those. So uh, a lot of fun anime and uh, Funimation and Section uh, 23 and all and Viz Media. Uh, they're all doing really, really great work these days. So uh, anime is one of those spots where despite all the, uh, the move away from Blu-ray and DVD, they continue to really pump out great stuff. It, so yeah, it's, it's all very cool. It's all stuff. very it's cool. It's wicked cool just in, 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 in concept. It, it, there's uh, some, but there's, some of it's really off the, off the edge. I, 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 I'm sure there are narcotics involved. Uh, as will be in the films I'm about to talk about because it's gay <laughs> cinema, which is a ridiculous thing to say. I have no idea why I said that. Although, uh, it, it's probably true of this movie, uh, A Place to Be, which is a lovely movie by uh, Tadeo Garcia. This particular movie is just a sort of con- uh, contemporary romance between these two young men um, um, uh, who've been sort of like passing each other uh, uh, for a while, and they sort of finally get together. One's name is Abel. He's a social worker, and the other one is an auto mechanic. His name is De- uh, Diego. Um, as is the case often today, uh, their relationship sort of comes into question when one of them has a immigration status problem. You can think about these movies. I, you remember it was, it was the visitor from a sure. couple of years ago. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so this is like one of those only set sort of like in the gay world where it still sort of matters. You know, it does it's, actually. It's That's important. interesting. I actually, it, and you know, there is a there is actually. Uh, because I know of instances where this has happened, yeah. and I can just see ice knocking on my door saying "spill the beans." Uh, but uh, I know of cases where uh, gay men and women have become what we can basically call uh, immigration mules. Yeah, where they, where people who needed to get papers, it's like, sure, I'll marry you. Yeah, uh, it's like green card, right? With, oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 one of the first junkets I ever did. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a. There, there are situations that where that will happen, and uh, and there's a, a surprising amount of that that goes on in the gay community as yeah, well. Yeah. I, I, in fact, because I know of, I know spe- of specific instances that I can, I can cite. Yeah, I got a few of those myself. Yeah, so. uh, TLA releasing. Uh, iconoclast film, so that's kind of a neat one. Uh, Russian Doll, this is a neat little thriller, too. Uh, yeah, it's sort of a, a lesbian a thriller, but nevertheless, a neat little movie just in and of itself. The, the neat thing about some of these films is, despite the, other than the fact that they happen to be uh, set in, in a world where mo- uh, most of the characters are gay, uh, some of these movies are just neat little movies. This would be one. This is a very sexy little um, edgy crime thriller. Uh, a young woman uh, finds out that there is a, a plot for a murder. She's literally about to, you know, drop drop a dime uh, when she gets yeah. abducted and disappears. Nice. Another cop, a young woman, has to come in and try to figure out what happened to the first one. Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, so you 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 end up in one of these with a little mystery on top of the mystery. Yeah. Uh, these things are, of course, all connected. And since it's a uh, lovely lesbian drama, there's a hot lot of you know naked girl stuff going on too. <laughs> so you get the you got the neat little thriller and your hot naked lesbian sex. I love it, and mm. I think it's fantastic. Um, this is from this is from Wolf. That's yeah. from Wolf. That one is from Wolf. Uh, Boy Undone. Uh, this is another uh, very powerful little movie too. Uh, a couple of young men uh, uh, meet at a, at a at a gay club, and the next day they get together and uh, um, and and, uh, and and have themselves a moment. Uh, and when they wake up, the first boy finds that the second boy has no recollection of who he is. He did the previous night. And it's a real thing that had, that's actually going on, what goes on in the rest of the movie sort of thing. Anyway, this is in Spanish with English subtitles. Again, a neat little thriller, no matter how you sort of shape this. If this didn't happen to be a, a gay couple, you'd still dig this movie, and you'd want to know what the heck was going on. Uh, so, you know, uh, from TLA as well. Uh, and then this one is a neat one, too. Uh, let's see who this is. This is from uh, Diku. 
Uh, uh, this is three short films, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, three short films about uh, what happens when a couple, a gay couple in this particular instance, allows a third person uh, into their relationship for a night of fun. Now, what's you, you think that you can only get one movie out of that, yeah. but they're actually three short films. I kind of like the way they figured how to, out how to do it. All right, so in the first one, one called Cass, you have a, a, a couple, and they, uh, for circumstances, allow a guy to come and sleep on the couch. He's going to sleep on the couch for a couple of days. They both sort of become attracted to him. They do the thing, and it means something to their relationship. Okay, that's fine. The second one, you have uh, these three friends. They're all friends, and they do what they do, and they wake up, and the whole movie is about them trying to figure out what this now means to their friendship of three. Mm -hmm. Totally different circumstance. Y you wouldn't think you could find a whole other circumstance. They found yet a third circumstance. Oh, that's fantastic. Y you have a couple. <laughs> and the couple has decided they're tri curious and they're gonna do it, and, they, and, and, they, and they're gonna do it, and they're gonna do it. But you know what? They're ridiculously nervous and they don't really want to do it. Uh, and so you know, Good the same setup. circumstance, three three different setups, a lot of fun. And uh, Good setup. A, as a guy who loved movies like Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice was, way back in the yeah, day, yeah, yeah, uh, I can I can tell you that was a lot of fun. All right, let's hit up some uh, some new movies and maybe a little bit of some classic stuff. We're we've got some uh, some interesting 4Ks here. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick through these 4Ks and we're gonna uh, we're gonna discuss a few things. Tim, mm -hmm. Disney's Wrinkle in Time. No. Now uh, they said you could. They said it was unmakeable. They said it was unmakeable. See, and and it's always you know this is one of those books you're supposed to read when you're in elementary school and it's supposed to ignite your interest in reading and it's you know a famous book for kids and it's uh, but yet it's very well written and the oh, yada 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 so forth and so on. So I never uh, liked it, but go on. Yes. So so here's the thing. Disney always wanted to make this, and uh, they they figured uh, you know what let's uh, we now have Ava DuVernay who's a celebrity director and let's throw this her way and uh, and going. see it and see if she can do it and get Oprah to sign on to this. And uh, I, honestly, all I could think of was, yep, it's, un it's unmakeable. Yeah, they were right the first time. They were right the first time. And it's nobody's fault. <laughs> no. Nah. Uh, everybody is just, they're working overtime to try to make this thing work, but they're, they're fighting the limitations of the book. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, 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 and I, I can see what uh, Miss Duvernay decided to try to do. She simply decided to like, ignore a lot of the content in the book and, and yeah. put her own spin on it in terms of look and style and and, and hope that she could just overwhelm the material with originality or some sort of a, a yeah, vision. I'll put yeah. this way, with, a, with, with a particular style. With, yes, yes. Uh, and, and no. It's just like David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas, a, a wonderful book that I love. And thing. everyone said they can't do it, they can't do Same it. Same thing. And those sisters went after it, uh, the Wachowski sisters. Uh, and Tom Hanks and Halle Berry, you know what? And 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 Tom uh, Tickver. And, and Tom and, yeah, 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 yeah. Hugh, Hugh Grant, the whole, the whole thing. And you know what? They were right the first time. Yeah, can't be done. Not can't any, be done. This one here too. It's uh, some things just they they need to stay in print. Uh, but I mean, a it, a noble I don't want to even call it a failure. A noble effort. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's an interesting film. Uh, if you're a fan of the book, you're going to be furious because it just does not in any way capture the book. It's mm -hmm. a thing unto itself. Uh, but it's uh, you know I this I I would almost love to teach a college class on films of this genre. Mm -hmm. Which would include Cloud Atlas. It would include a Wrinkle in Time. Uh, there are a handful of others that you know. There are maybe five or six others where it's like not a bad film, not a good film, mm. but it's you know it it tells you why certain it you you can look at this and you can see the limitations of film and the limitations of print and what happens when an adaptation kind of goes off the rails and what people do to try to change that. Different people feel different ways about this one. I'll be interested. Uh, uh, um, Slaughterhouse-Five uh, from, uh, I don't know, the early 70s. Yeah. Some people that, love it. Some people have issues I'm a fan. with it. I'm a fan. Uh, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, the original Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is, again, yeah. same sort of thing. True. And there was a new one, Truffaut. Uh, uh, and I love it. Uh, but some people feel like, no. And, and then they just did it again on HBO with Michael B. Jordan and Michael yeah. Shannon. And some yeah. people are like, no. I haven't seen that. Have you seen it? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. No. No? Yeah. yeah. You know, but I like the Truffaut film, but some people can't. Um, and then I know I'm a fan of with the Wretch, Richard Burton and, and um, uh, 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 the, the, with, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the one. Uh, uh, you know, Richard Burton with the rats, and he puts the rats in the thing. And goes. Oh, and goes, oh, oh, 1984. 1984. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm a fan of 1984, and I know you're not a fan of 1984. And well, lots of people say no. You know, I, 1984 is a, is a book that, 
the I 19 think, the 19 you're talking about the 1984 Michael, 1984 yeah the Michael Radford film Michael Radford with, film you know where 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 Richard Burton pulls out John Hurt's tooth and yeah. John Hurt says why are you doing this to me and he says I'm not doing it to you you're doing it to yourself <laughs> beautiful well done uh yeah well, I remember I, I I actually went and saw that with Brian Burke believe it or not I still remember that really well uh, and that arrhythmic score, Dave yeah. Stewart, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but Dark some people film. say no. Anyway, interesting point. So uh, next up, uh, Annihilation with Natalie Portman. Um, talking about girl power, mm. uh, you know, uh, what would you think of this? I, I, I think Alex Garland, I think, is a very, very talented guy. But I think sometimes, I know everybody loved this, but I think sometimes... Things are sometimes he's a little too clever for his own good. Alex Garland, ex machina, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the film. A, well, a yeah, terrific yeah. writer and, and a good director. Oh, yeah, 28, 28 days later. I mean, you yeah. know, never let me go. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, look, I wanted to like it a hell of a lot more than I actually did. What I liked about it were the ladies. Yeah. But I know in my bones, if you swap those ladies out with three dudes and put them in the same movie, same dialogue, you know, more or less, it yeah. can't, can't really be the same. But yeah. but uh, but if but more or less the same, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't like it at all. Gorgeous on 4K, I will say that it looks really fantastic, and as does Ava's film, by the way. I mean, you know, 4K yeah. makes all those. I mean, she loads that thing up with color, color and yeah. design costume, and yeah. costume and everything. It just pops. You know, if you want to honestly put a wrinkle in time on on your 4K. If you have a, if you, it is, it is a UHD bonanza. It is like UHD on on LSD. Is what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it looks absolutely spectacular. Annihilation also very, very sharp looking in uh, in 4K. Here's a couple of 4Ks that uh, I could kind of do without. A couple of dumb action movies. Uh, the Hurricane Heist, Rob Cohen movie. That's just uh, him trying to get back into the into the Fast and Furious franchise that he launched, and which then threw him to the side. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about guys trying to you know rob the U.S. Mint. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. There's no conceivable way, and it and it doesn't. Uh, it's just it's a big dumb Rob Cohen movie, and I'm so disappointed that he's made big dumb movies ever since he made Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, which I thought was a sharp smart <laughs> yeah. film. I thought Rob Cohen, you're going legit. No, then he just started making a bunch of crap. It's really too bad. Uh, so that's the Hurricane Heist. It's on 4K only because it's big and loud, and you know it makes takes advantage of the lossless audio in a very glorious way. And then from a few years ago, a movie that came and went, uh, Escape Plan. You know, Escape Plan uh, would have been a big deal in night like 1986. Yeah, when you could put Stallone and Schwarzenegger above the title, and it meant something. Mm. It doesn't mean anything now. No, Stallone Schwarzenegger above the title. <laughs> Might as we might as well be like uh, not you know an Expendables film. No, it might as well be you know uh, <coughs> James Caan and 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 <laughs> you know uh, and and uh, some other old guy. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, they're you know they're too they're too old to, to do this kind of a movie anymore. It just doesn't uh, doesn't have its same ref resonance. Uh, yeah. audio particularly if you're not if it's not you know about the fact that we're very old. No, and that joke really only plays once, and they played it already. And, and, you know, Mikhail Hofstrom, who directed it, does a commentary with Miles Chapman, the co-writer, which is perfectly fine. And there's some featurettes on here. Uh, it doesn't really belong on 4K as like, a, like an A-list thing. It's, I don't know why they decided to kind of pump that one out. Uh, I'll tell you what is pretty cool, although I could do without a couple of these, is uh, the four-movie 4K limited edition of the Jurassic Park 25th anniversary collection. You get Jurassic Park. The Lost World Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, and Jurassic World. I'm sure, as everybody now knows, I despise Jurassic World. I think it's an absolutely horrible film that just takes the original Jurassic Park and uh, swaps characters out for new characters, does much of the same stuff again, except it badly. Yeah. Bad special effects, bad script, not a good movie. I know it made a ton of money. I know Universal is totally invested in it, and we're going oh to have to suffer through another one this special summer. Special rides and uh. Uh, so, and 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 I warn people: don't think this is the last time that a 4K set of this is being released. In a in about seven months, <laughs> you're going to have a five film box set. Yeah, just in time for the holidays. Yeah, and uh, it'll it'll include the new one. Uh, so I wouldn't you know be too invested in this. Um, look, the original Jurassic Park is still a great film. 
looks tremendous in 4K. Really, really a wonderful transfer. Uh, they include the six-part documentary here on Blu-ray, uh, the uh, Return to Jurassic Park. Uh, they've got making of featurettes. They've got you know all kinds of fun stuff, deleted scenes and storyboards. All of this stuff is in uh, is in just Blu-ray. And uh, also, Jurassic Park: Lost World, the second one, is not a bad film. I mean, yeah. it's a, it, it's kind of unnecessary. I am kind of a fan of Jurassic Park three. Yeah, kind of because it has the pterodactyls in it. Uh, that's the one with uh, Vince Vaughn yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, Paul I'm, Giamatti. And it kind of tried to pave its own way a little bit. And yeah. so I'm not entirely opposed to it. Uh, but, you know, basically the only thing you need is the original Jurassic Park. It's still the, the yeah, original yeah. and the best yeah. by far. And then the last 4K here uh, we've got is The Matrix, finally on 4K Ultra HD, not being heavily marketed to any degree. But uh, you can pop this into your Movies Anywhere account. And watch The Matrix, uh, which continues to be a visual feast, as long as we're talking about the Wachowskis, who were, of course, the Wachowski brothers at the time they made this. And uh, the you know what? The film is still really seminal. I, I, yeah. I know the style has been, has been kind of turned into a joke and all the stuff. I mean, I know it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but it was still a, a milestone film. Well, bullet time became an actual, you know, right. phrase. You know, I, 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 you know. Uh, it's, you know, the UHD on this is, uh, or the, the HDR, I should say. The HDR is really, really great. Uh, it, it's, it's really, really, it's, it, it, they did a very, very good job remastering it and making sure that you kind of captured the detail in all of the, the effects and the way that the real world contrasts with the virtual world. It's, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. The the effects really hold up, and the movies anywhere version is also very very good. They don't lose a lot in the way that that streams either. So, highly recommended there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Where are we going? Uh, let's uh, let's go into uh, let's go into this stuff here. Well, the new movie, kind, yeah. kind of newish movie business, yeah. right? Uh, so Bruce Willis, Death Wish, that Death Wish series with Charlie Bronson. From the uh, early seventies, yeah, uh, it was an extraordinary series. Uh, yeah, at that time, there was a, there was just a context in which that movie, and of course, you had uh, uh, Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry series uh, running at the same time. Um, and there was a context in which those movies sort of worked. Um, uh, revenge movies, uh, in, in the case of the Death with movies, just a man, a regular man, something happens to his family, uh, the, the police are not responsive, and he has to go out and do his own thing. Uh, and the Charlie, uh, the, uh, the the Dirty Harry movies were a bit more problematic because he was a cop uh, who had to you know take things as, into his own hands. The, uh, so so here we have uh, Bruce Willis and a remake remake of a Death Wish. Yeah, you know, in and of itself, as just a sort of standalone movie, it's okay. It's an Eli Roth film, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bruce Willis is just about the right guy. He's probably the only guy that I can think of really who can pull this off. Maybe Denzel. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, but this is this is just Death Wish, uh, just a remake, straight up uh, reimagining is what they call it of the 1974 revenge thriller. Uh, he's a surgeon, uh, and uh, something happens to his uh, to his wife, played by Elizabeth Shue. Love me some Elizabeth Shue, uh, and his daughter. Uh, They're viciously attacked. Uh, you remember in that original uh, Death Wish film, film, one of the attackers of the family, you, you, you know who one of them was? Oh, I, I uh, don't uh, remember. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Was he really? Yeah. yeah. And, he, and oh dude, he's God. playing it so crazy. He's playing it crazier than all the other I've got to go back and watch again. Watch that he's tall. Well, he's, always, he's always tall. And skinny. He has all this hair. And yeah. he's just playing it completely insane, See, man. I love, I love that stuff. I, especially um, uh, The Graduate, right? When uh, when Norman Fell <laughs> is, is saying to Dustin Hoffman, and what's going on in here? I heard a scream. I don't like hearing screams. And then you see this head pop up over his shoulder. Go, you want me to call the cops? You want me to call the cops? And it's Richard Dreyfus, <laughs> young Richard Dreyfus. And that's the only thing he says in the movie. It's hysterical. And who would have known that, you know, just uh, just uh, like a decade later, he'd win Best Actor. Yeah. It's just, there you, it is. You, 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 you just troll around old you movies. Do. You see neat stuff. This has a commentary with, with uh, Eli and uh, producer Roger Birnbaum. So you know what? If you're into the whole scene, that scene, this is an okay movie. It still yeah. works as good as the old one. Uh, so here's a movie called Every Day, and uh, boy, I want to be fair to this. I really, really do, uh, but here's the problem with it. Mm. So Every Day is based on a novel, and I, 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 I think the problem is that the novel itself is derivative. I, I really would love to believe that these people are, uh, well, that, that lightning can strike twice, but I don't. So here's the story. 
Uh, this is about a girl. This is a teenage romance thing. It's very uh, Nicholas Sparks ish in mm. some ways, but mm. it has an interesting uh, it has an interesting angle to it, which is about this girl who um, uh, has fallen in love with uh, a person that is in a different body every single day. And uh, well, as interesting as that sounds, it's been done. And here's the problem. In 2012, this was originally a, uh, a web series called The Beauty Inside, mm. which was not very good. I remember. I remember. Did we talk about this on the show? I think it was you and I. We did, because, yeah. because The Beauty Inside was remade yeah. as a Korean feature film a uh -huh. couple of years ago, which I think was number four or five on my top ten that year. Yeah. Because it's brilliant. Extraordinary. Yeah. Incredible. And the Korean film, The Beauty Inside, basically took a web series and said, that concept is great. Your execution sucks. You don't see the poetry in this. Mm -hmm. We are going to take this concept. We're just going to borrow this, and now we are going to uh, we're going to we're going to work this the way that it needs to be worked. And that Korean film is amazing. This kind of schmaltzes it all up again and pretends that it's from this novel. I I I, I did not research when the novel was published, but I find it very curious that uh, this is all kind of in the mix at the same time. So. Kind of hard to believe that the novel every day didn't completely rip off uh, the beauty inside, regardless. Anyway. Inter interesting thing. The Lodgers with an S, not the uh, Alfred oh, Hitchcock yes. thing. Uh, this is this is actually a sort of interesting. This is one of those sort of dark sort of uh, uh, insidious sort of movies set at the turn of the century or so. You have these uh, sort of kins, uh, twins, sorry. They live in this sort of gothic uh, mansion uh, that is uh, inhabited by a, 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 a sinister presence that comes out at night. And it's punishing these twins uh, by making them uh, not allow anyone to cross over the threshold of the right. place. And they have to be in bed by midnight. And this whole sort of thing, they're just living this sort of uh, uh, life of misery. Uh, and then a, 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 a veteran uh, comes to the home uh, and sort of falls for Rachel, and they start to break all the rules. Uh, and the uh, sinister presence has to do the stuff it has to do. Anyway, it's actually a very dark and uh, dastardly film. It has the feel of one of those sort of lovely uh, 1960s sort of uh, uh, 13 ghosts uh, sort of uh, situations. Uh, you know, a haunted house film or something like that. Yeah. Uh, neat stuff, plus lots and lots and lots of special features behind the film, behind the scenes uh, documentary, deleted scenes, uh, various, uh, just all kinds of neat stuff. So check it out. It's actually quite a neat thriller if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so I got a couple of uh, a couple of IFC midnight horror films here, which are both perfectly serviceable, um, and and in some respects a, a lot of fun. IFC midnight, uh, I mean, they have the production value that kind of elevates them to a different uh, level. So the Midnight Man is an adaptation of an Irish film from 2013, which is also included on here. By the way, this is a Blu-ray, it's a straight up Blu-ray, not a combo pack. Uh, the I, I think the Irish film is better, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, you get them both here, so you don't have to. You don't have to choose. Um, it, it's and it's also really, really nicely shot. It's really, it's pretty great widescreen. So make sure you have a big TV for it. So I don't know who Travis Z is, but Travis Z did the uh, directed and uh, and adapted this, and um, the it's kind of a. It's, I don't want to say it's a parody because it's not a parody, but it definitely riffs on a lot of horror uh, horror archetypes, certain tropes that we see a lot in horror films, mm -hmm. and it does it with a little bit of a wink, but it doesn't go completely into satire and, and scream-style mockery. Uh, it really uh, it, it just sort of has fun with it. It says, we're one of these kinds of movies, mm -hmm. and we know that you know that, so we can wink at each other, and now let's have fun. And uh, Robert Englund shows up in this because he has to be in all of these kinds of things. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's one of these uh, one of these things that kind of um, it, the midnight game itself that it references is like this ancient pagan thing, this uh, this ancient ritual. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all it it all centers around kind of a, in a seance type way, unleashing the spirit of. Uh, the Midnight Man. Uh, and, you know, I, gotta, I love that concept. Yeah, the mid, and like the Candyman. The yeah, those and, it, and it's uh, you know there there are a lot of it's. I mean, you know pretty much where it's going to go, but it's still kind of fun. Uh, the other one is Devil's Gate, which oddly enough is not about a gate, and it's not about the devil. I'm sorry, I take that back. It, it, it is about the devil and a gate, um, and uh, that you know that's everything you need to know about it. 
Uh, Amanda Shule and Milo Ventimiglia are very, very good in this. Jonathan Frakes, I can't see in anything except Star Trek. Yeah. I just always he just always seems out of place to me now. Next gen, next gen. You know what I mean? I just look at him and I'm just like, you're. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be? Isn't there a starship missing a captain somewhere? Because <laughs> you should be somewhere else. Oh. Anyway. Uh, so this is, you know, all about devil forces and, and you know, this, this haunted farmhouse and it's exactly what you would expect it to be. And it gets very creepy and scary and terrifying. Uh, and you have to really lean on the actors. And again, Amanda Shul and Viola, Vent, Milo Ventimiglia are both terrific. Uh, Jonathan Frakes just out of place. Uh, but so that's a DVD and Blu-ray combo pack. And, uh, again, from, uh, IFC Midnight. Uh, let's see. I got Gringo over here. This movie was so odd when it came out. I love the cast. David Yellow, Charlize Theron, uh, Joel Edgerton, Amanda Seyfried, Thondi Newton, Charlton Copley. I mean, you hear that, you hear all That's of that. That's good cast. And you're like, wow, wow, wow. Movie? No, no. no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's, it's about this guy, uh, you know, the black guy, David Yellow, who, who sort of like stumbles into a situation with these sort of like, uh, uh drug, uh, weed yeah. growing, selling people in Mexico. And it gets really dark and oh, it's no. funny and all of that. But I'm like, you know, uh, that's okay. Yeah. It really didn't need that. What's it, It's a Nash Edgerton film. And, of course, Joel is in it. I think this film exists if, uh, because Nash and Joel are brothers, and Joel said yes, so uh, Nash got to make himself a goofy little movie, but I didn't like it. Uh, I also have Game Night. Uh, we're talking Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams, and this should have been a big, again, it should have been a big, funny, sort of goofy, you know, I, yeah. but no. No, 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 no. Yeah, this one is is uh, yeah, about this uh, group of people. They get together, they have this game night. Yeah. Uh, Jason Bateman's brother uh, creates one of those sort of mystery evenings, supposed to be a murder mystery, yeah. to figure out who did it. Uh, then he gets kidnapped. They think it's a part of the game night. Turns out, no, he just got kidnapped. Uh, and this all turns in. But again, it gets all dark, like very bad things. You'd think, you'd think filmmakers would have figured out that mm. don't work anymore. Uh, bonus features on uh, game night, an unforgettable evening, the making of uh, game night. And bonus features on Gringo, the making of Gringo, stunts of Gringo, filming Gringo in Mexico. So you got stuff. Mm. So Thoroughbreds should have been a better movie. Wish it were a better movie because it's basically Anton Yelchin's final film. Yeah. And that's sad, but he's very good in it. Uh, Olivia Cook, who I adore. Let me just say how much I adore Olivia Cook. Mm. I think she's great. Even when she's in movies I don't like, I just love her. Uh, and she was recently in Ready Player One, the Spielberg film. She's terrific in it. So Olivia Cook uh, co-stars here with Anya Taylor Joy, and they are uh, girls that grew up in suburban Connecticut and uh, kind of went their separate ways, and now they've come back together. And uh, one of them hates her stepdad, and suddenly everything goes all strangers on a train. <laughs> and and uh, kind of, I mean, that's basically what's going on here. Uh, in sort of sort of. In a way, uh, it's the closest analogy I can come up with that makes sense. Anyway, it's um, I wish this was better. It tries to be darkly funny in ways that's maybe not quite appropriate, but I I can guardedly recommend it just because the the cast is so good, Yelchin is so good, Olivia Cook is always really really great, and I'm not that familiar with Anya Taylor Joy, but she also is very good, and I'm looking forward to seeing her in other things. So. I'm lukewarm on the on the whole the overall deal, but I like the cast enough that it gets me over the hump. Uh, let's see the 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 steam engines of Oz. This is sort of like quasi steampunk recon <laughs> of the whole Wizard of Oz tale. Don't so need a, that. A, a post Wizard of Oz tale. It takes place a hundred years. Yeah, later. Don't, you don't need it. Don't need uh, that. The Tin Man's like a bad guy in this sort of thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, what are you doing with to the Tin Man? Tin Man's yeah. an okay dude, but in, but in any case, uh, a young woman. Uh, who's really technically savvy, has to go back to Oz and uh, use her technical skills and mechanical skills to undo uh, the doings of the Tin Man uh, before his blah, 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 blah. You don't need this. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Know. All right, and then we have uh, Trudy Styler's new film on Blu-ray, Freak Show, which, had, uh, which is, is a whole kind of... There's a whole kind of a, you know, flaunty drag thing going on here. It kind of feels a little bit in some ways like a like a knockoff uh, sister film to Priscilla, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of oh, the Desert. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a little bit. Anyway, uh, which so there's already a knockoff. Billy Bloom, Billy Bloom plays kind of this, uh, you know, this fabulous kid. And uh, Bette Midler is his fabulous mom. And uh, <laughs> then he has to go and spend time with his dad, who is not so fabulous. 
And uh, that's kind of it, you know. Uh, it's it's kind of uh, coming of age, but with a uh, with a very kind of uh, queerish, draggy sensibility to it, and uh, it, it's and a little Paul campy. Jean Foley or something. Yeah, it's, you know, bird it's, cagey. It's I mean, it it's not. I I, I don't want to make it sound like it is because this is part of the problem with films that have uh, themes that are either directly or even per- tangentially LGBT. Mm-hmm. Is that people think, oh, it's one of those movies, yeah. you know? And faith-based films fa- face same the same thing. problem. It's yeah. it, it's like they've become kind of this fringe, and people just assume they don't cross over. There's actually a lot here. This is this is all about people who are just you know if you if you're if you're a loner and if you want to kind of fly your own flag, then you know you'll find something to to latch onto in here. So, uh, freak show is a tribute to all the freaks, or as uh, Barry Manilow would say, those who made it through the rain, yeah, and and uh, bonded with those who got rained on too. So. <laughs> Anyway, kind of neat. Uh, what this is so. So this is all. Yeah, that that's a. This is these are new Mill Creek things. Mill Creek has a whole bunch of new stuff uh, this month. And, epic uh, miniseries. I got mostly uh, the stuff that uh, that I have over here is a little TV kind of business here, Blu-ray. Uh, you got the Tenth Kingdom. I remember this series from the uh, late '90s, maybe early 2000s, uh, because just about everybody of note uh, was in it way the hell back then. You got Rooker Hauer, and you got uh, John Larroquette, and Kimberly Williams, uh, who was in the Father of the Bride series of films, and Anne Margaret, uh, and Cameron Mannheim, and on and on and on and on. Uh, it was just a neat sort of wacky series set uh, in, 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 in these futuristic, fantastical worlds, uh, kind of like Hobbity, these nine kingdoms uh, in fairyland where there are all these different sort of people running things. It only lasted a very short while, probably because it wasn't particularly good. Nevertheless, <laughs> we have it here with the isolated score and some bonus features, including the making of The Tenth Kingdom. Uh, got some good action stuff from Mill Creek. Mill Creek has... Um, uh, so here's, what, here's what's going on. There's a, there's a very good movie that didn't get enough credit at the time, and now that, it, now that Dwayne Johnson is a bigger hit of a star... You might want to go and rediscover Gridiron Gang, mm. new, new on Blu-ray from uh, Mill, Creek's, Mill Creek Special Edition. A lot of great special features here, commentary uh, with, uh, with the director Phil Joano and, uh, and the screenwriter uh, Jeff McGuire. Um, other bit in here. Now, Phil Joano's career went a little bit south some years ago yeah. after, you know, he was the hot thing. And then he made, you know, uh, what was it, 3 O'Clock High. Yeah. Did that rattle and hum and a few other things. And then just didn't didn't really kind of flamed out. This is actually a good film. It's well done. He kind of restrains the style a little bit. The idea is about a bunch of kids, delinquent kids, uh, at this camp. Dwayne Johnson is their inspirational coach Mm -hmm. and how he, you know, football becomes the thing that gives them purpose in life and and a way of turning their lives around. We've seen this movie a million times, but you know what? There's a reason. Yeah. Because it's a really great concept and it's all centered on the characters. Yeah. And if you can make the characters work, that as predictable as that story is. About sports movies. Mm -hmm. There are sports movies that are about the sport. And there are sport That's movies it. that are unequivocally and absolutely not about the sport. That's it. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, That's the it. ones that are not actually about the sport are the better sports. And movies. that is this one, in yeah. fact. Uh, look, it's a, it's based on a true story. And uh, it, 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 the characters are strong, and that's all that matters is that you're connected to the characters. And Dwayne Johnson shows his stuff here. He's a terrific actor. If you want more than just that movie... Uh, then you're going to want to pick up their action nine movie collection, which is which includes Gridiron Gang, along with a lot of lesser stuff, which includes Universal Soldier: The Return, Double Team, Maximum Risk, The Hardcore, uh, Second in Command, You Got Served, and Stomp the Yard. Now, I don't consider You Got Served and Stomp the Yard to be <laughs> action films. Stop the yard. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a, a dance, dance movie. movie. I know. Yeah, right. But nonetheless, you can get all of that in a single nine-film Blu-ray collection. Uh, and there's a lot of Van Damme on here, to be honest. It's, it's it, you know, Maximum Risk and Double Team and Universal Soldier The Return and The Hardcore and Second in Command are all Van Damme movies. So they should have called this just the Van Damme box oh, set yes, that's it. with a Dwayne good. Johnson movie and a couple of dance movies thrown in for good measure. Uh, but they didn't. They call it the uh, Action 9 movie collection. So, look, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, 
it's inexpensively Just know you're priced. You're gonna get that dance movie in your action movie collection. Okay. Yeah. And then they also have a uh, they also have a, an action triple feature which include this is just on DVD not on Blu-ray this includes Vehicle 19 which is crap Junkman which is crap uh, but you know it's HB Halicki and it's uh, it's uh, there's a certain cult value to that and Go which is terrific and Go is a really good film directed by uh, Doug Lehman and uh, it's kind of fallen off the radar a little bit but it's a great great movie I so, always love that movie it's a terrific film you know the sharp little uh, Sarah Pauly yep uh, I, our, our good friend my, yeah. our good friend Stephen Marioni yeah. uh, d- edited it before he went on to win an Oscar for uh, for Traffic and to do yeah. you know all kinds of other great films for uh, for Soderbergh so. yeah, yeah and it's really weird because Doug would go on with all those uh, boring movies yeah yeah, but he starts with the kind of little movie that was going. Yep. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, magic, the magical legend of Leprechaun. Uh, this is interesting. I remember this series, uh, uh, which was uh, a, a movie which was completely nuts, although the cast was insane. Um, so it's about this guy played by uh, Randy Quaid who uh, moves his family to this Emerald Island, right, where he inhabits this little um, uh, cottage that uh, uh, has leprechauns in it. And he makes friends with these leprechauns, and they hang around doing all kinds of wacky leprechauns. Let me tell you something. Home Meany, Kieran Culkin, Roger Daltrey, and Whoopi Goldberg are in this. Whoopi Goldberg wearing some crazy, I suppose, uh, black leprechaun outfit. Uh, I, you, look, you tell me. I have no idea. But there it is. It was nutty as heck. Two hours and 53 minutes worth of Randy Quaid and Whoopi Goldberg running around Whoopi Goldberg in a lepre- uh, leprechaun outfit. Nuts. It's weird to me to think back and think that Randy Quaid and Whoopi Goldberg were in a movie together. Yeah, yeah. That was normal for that moment in time, but now I look back and I feel like that's a time warp. And then at the end of the day, Randy Quaid would be the crazy one. <laughs> Who'd thunk? Who'd thunk? Whoopi would be on screen. Anyway, uh, Seth, Seth Meyers and Mike Shoemaker's uh, series, The Awesome uh, the Awesomes, uh, the complete series right here in my hand. This is really, really cool. Uh, 30 episodes, uh, all three seasons, bonus trailers, promos, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, obviously, the neat little um, animated series about uh, a group of superheroes who have these wacky sort of superpowers and don't actually do anything to save the world, mostly. Funny stuff, irreverent, a little bit blue. Not the kind of thing you want to let the kids watch, but the Awesomes complete series. Blu-ray and digital. Nice. I have got uh, this version of Mysterious Island, Jules Verne's Mysterious Island, is directed by Russell Mulcahy. I oh, my tell gosh. You, was it really? Oh, yeah. D- d- bro, uh, first of all, it's, uh, you, you got uh, Cal McLaughlin, Gabrielle Anwar, you got Vinnie Jones, you got uh, Patrick Stewart in this version. I mean, this is a Jules Verne. You know, they got the guys here yeah. in the prison camp and yeah. doing the confederate where the balloon comes and they get <laughs> yeah, all of that. So, uh, um, and Russell Mulcahy and... Dude, 1986. There's, there's another director who just kind of fell out of out of, out of everyone's is. graces. And and, and, and and probably a while ago. But I, frankly, Russell McKay in Highlander, of course, yeah. 1986. And before that, cre- some of the most uh, important music videos of all yeah. time you yeah. know, was Russell McKay at the beginning of sort of music yeah. videos and all that kind of stuff. And anyway, um, this is really sort of neat just to see in general Russell McKay sort of knocking it out in a classic uh, Jules Verne a story, Mysterious Island. Uh, a couple more box sets here. Nothing that, you know, is really going to, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, this is all sampler stuff. So there's a Crime Time TV box set from Mill Creek, Hot Streets and Cool Cops. This is if you just, you know, you don't need a whole series. You just want uh, w- uh, just a taste of some cool stuff. So they give you Miami Vice Season 1 on DVD. And they give you Knight Rider Season 1 on DVD. And then uh, 20 just assorted episodes of whatever. Uh, you know, Dragnet and Dick Tracy and Sherlock Holmes and just a whole bunch of other stuff. This is just, you know, if you want to have something to throw on TV and uh, during a party and keep people distracted and, you know, something to talk about, there you go. Get yourself the uh, Crime Time Hot Streets and Cool Cops uh, box set and it'll do the trick. And then we also have the uh, five family favorites. Try to say that twenty times uh, fast. Five family favorites. <laughs> I don't know if these are really family favorites, to be honest, uh, but they are. They are actually movies that uh, may be favorites to some family somewhere. So here are the movies. Are we there yet with Ice Cube? Which you know is cute. I, I still think Are We There Yet has. Yeah, has, I, I, I think I it's fine. I, I love that. 
Yeah, it's a cute film. Uh, he, you know, that's Ice Cube when he's getting into dad mode and trying to shed his uh, his his sort of angry de- gangster de- persona. De- de-gangsterizing. He de-gangster. I call be- I call it the de-gangsterization of be- Ice Cube. And he became a dad <laughs> model. He's like the new Bill Cosby, and Bill Cosby is now more more yeah. <laughs> more more gangster than he ever all, was. All I know is I'd much Whipped. rather leave my kids with Ice Cube <laughs> than with Bill. Co- if you had asked me that in 1998. <laughs> 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 who'd have, I wonder who the fuck that answer would change. Oh my gosh. Where are you going to drop your kids off? Ice Cube's house, please. Uh, the other movies on here include Bandit and the Saints of Dogwood. What? <laughs> it's not a family favorite. I never even heard of this movie. Uh, the Big Goofy Secret of Hidden Pines. What? I don't even know what this is. It's something to do with a baby Bigfoot, and it's very weird and strange. Uh, the Last Day of Summer, I, I have some vague un- knowledge of. And then the last one here is North, which is not good. Uh, that's a really, really bad movie. Uh, just a very unfortunate film. So, um, you know, uh, if you if those have any appeal to you, then pick this up. But otherwise, I say just pick up Are We There Yet all by itself. <laughs> and you'll be, uh, and you'll you'll be, be good fine. to go. Uh, the Merlin Three Film Collection. Three films about Merlin. Or, nice. Uh, Arthur and Camelot and whatnot. Merlin, Merlin's Apprentice, and Merlin of the Return. Um, was what's most interesting about this uh, series of three films uh, uh, regarding Merlin uh, is that one of them is good. Um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the, it, it would be the 1998 film Merlin, which is really not even a film. It's a television series, and it starts Sam Neill and Miranda Richardson and Isabella Rossellini. And knowing that right there tells you why it's pretty damn good. Uh, I remember actually watching that film back in 19, that, that series back in 1998 when it was when it was airing, it was quite good. And then uh, Maryland the Return, 2000, uh, I, I remember this, uh, and, and the thing that I remember about it, this is 2000, is that Lancelot uh, was played by a young Adrian Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and uh, Patrick Bergen played uh, King Arthur, so that was a pretty solid movie. That middle film, Merlin's Apprentice, 2006, is not a film, it's a television series, 185. Um, to be honest with you, can't remember it at all. Uh, and uh, I- as I look it up and, and look at these names, Johnny Reardon, uh, Jennifer Calvert, I don't know any of these people. Uh, but uh, somehow they got themselves cast in a film about Merlin's apprentice, and, or, uh, so uh, good for them. Uh, but three, the three-film Merlin collection. Two of them, uh, one of them is good, uh, one of them is interesting, and the other one I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last three this week, uh, these are all from Paramount. These are all TV shows, and we are giving them away. So ah. say thank you, Paramount. Yes, Paramount. Say thank you, Paramount. We're going to give these away. So here's what we're giving away. Um, uh, the Shannara Chronicles Season 2, we're giving away one. Mm. Now, here's the, here's the hitch. These can only go to United States addresses. So to our listeners overseas, we apologize. Uh, Paramount has asked that these only be, uh, that the, that you have to have a U.S. address to, uh, to receive these. So, for whatever rights reasons, whatever's going on. So, uh, here's what we got. Shannara Chronicles Season 2. If you are interested in receiving one copy, uh, of the Blu-ray of Shannara Chronicles Season 2, we're only giving away one, so there will be one winner. Send us an email to gods at digigods.com or gods at cinegods.com with the word chronicles. S at the end, please, Chronicles. Don't misspell it. No funny spellings. No, like, K-R-O-N-Y-K-L. No, no Zs. Just Chronicles. C-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S. And uh, send that to godsatdigigods.com or godsatcinegods.com with your name and address in the body of the email. And uh, this is still a really good show. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to be honest. I thought I wasn't sure if the season one would kind of peter out. Season two, it's a very interesting show. It's very girl centric, and that's what I like about it. Yep, same here. And uh, I like the fact that it's doing that uh, that that kind of magical Lord of the Ringsy thing in mm-hmm. its own way. Mm-hmm. It's finding its own path there. It's not imitating Lord of the Rings. It's not imitating uh, Game of Thrones. It's not doing any of that. It's sort of finding its own path, and uh, the cast is good, and they're sharp, and they're good, and we're giving one away. Mm, We're also going to give away two copies of the 21st season of South Park on Blu-ray. South Park is finally old enough to drink. South Park (laughs) is old enough to drink. (laughs) That's bad news for Cartman. Uh, Anyway... The you know this show somehow continues to just because they just take on the headlines. Yeah. Every week they sit down and they just say, "What was stupid this week? Let's yeah. make fun of it." What can we be dumber than? What can we be dumber than? Yeah. And they just stay right on top of the headlines: the opi- opioid epidemic, 
uh, you name it, it's just whatever it is, they are all over it, they are on top of it, and it continues to be a really, really smart, smart show. Uh, mini commentaries on all of them with Trey and Matt, and uh, they are always really fun. They're they're a little bit less profane than they used to be when they're <laughs> when that first season. Do you remember that in the first Damn season? It, com- Cartman. Their commentaries were so profane yeah. that Paramount had to release it separately. It was not actually on the Blu-ray. You had to put it play it on your CD player <laughs> and, and sync it. Up. It was ridiculous. So uh, um, yeah, the, you know North Korea gets a gets a gets a jab here. Uh, they they just they're terrific. Uh, so anyway, great season. We're giving away two of these. So uh, send that email to gods at digigods.com or gods at cinegods.com. Name and address in the body of the email and in this subject line. Just put Cartman. 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 Cartman will filter that sucker right to uh, the right folder. And then lastly, we are giving two copies to very lucky people. And you can apply for all these. If you win one, you know, we're going to do them in the order. So just know that if you wind up winning these first two, you're going to be ineligible for the one that I'm going to mention right now. Mm -hmm. And that's Jackass, the complete movie and TV collection. Oh wow! So on it, the heels of the release of the yes, yeah, that new film, film that action new film. point, yeah, action Johnny point. Knoxville movie. So we are giving away two complete movie and TV collections of Jackass, and uh, this is DVD, not Blu-ray. This is DVD, uh, but we're giving away two of these. So if you want to be, if you want to get something, you're gonna uh, you're gonna enter all three. If you don't want to risk being cut out of Jackass. Because you win one of the other two, then only send us one for Jackass. Mm-hmm. Uh, or for any of the others, for that matter. So Jackass, complete movie and TV collection. I gotta say, I'm not a fan, but I have friends <laughs> who've worked on this. It's like I got uh, into the biggest fight with Amy Nicholson, our colleague, yeah. uh, last Monday, because, you know, that movie. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just like, oh, stop. Because she loves <laughs> these movies. You know? Uh, you know what? Look, there's no point in even reviewing this. There really isn't. <laughs> Uh, what am I going to tell you? Either you like you like people doing masochistic, you know, self torture and laughing about it, or you don't. I, I, it's just it's what it is. She it is made what it a, is. she made a uh, an argument for some of the visual humor in Jackass 3D that she thought approached, uh, you know, Busker Keaton esque. Uh, yeah, okay, know. that's too far. <laughs> that's that's a bridge too far. It was the, it's the one where he paints himself red, white, and blue, and then stands in front of Look, a red, white, and blue yeah. wall to see if the bull will see him. Okay, that's a yeah, that's a clever bu- uh, a, a visual joke, but the movie's like 120 no. minutes long. No, so, no, know, the rest not. of it has just fallen down. Part of this is, I mean, I will I will be honest. So anyway, send us an email to gods at cinegods or gods at digigods dot com uh, with Jackass in the subject line, name and uh, address in the body of the email, and two people will win that. All of these contests, we're going to give you more time this time. All of these must be received. Time and date stamped no later than Monday the 11th. We're going to give you till Monday the 11th, the whole weekend, because we know a lot of people don't get around to listening to the podcast till the weekend. So, well, you got until Monday the 11th to get these in, and uh, we're going to have some very happy listeners. Uh, thanks to Paramount, American addresses only, U.S. addresses only, unfortunately. So, um, but I will say this, and just closing this out on Jackass, uh, because I grew up with a lot of Jackass friends. Uh, <laughs> You know, the people who would do things on a dare. I have one friend. I love him dearly. But, you know, truly, if yeah. if you said to him, and this is when we were in high school, and I doubt he'd still do it, but if you'd said to him, uh, here, I just uh, mashed up an olive, and I put it into this glass with ketchup and mustard and a few torn up pieces of paper <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, and some hot sauce and, uh, and, a, and a pickle. I dare you to take a spoonful and hold it in your mouth. I will pay you a quarter for every second you can hold it in your mouth. He usually made about eight bucks on that deal. You know, it's it is what it is. The one time, the one time he didn't pull it off was uh, we were at a place called Pizza Cookery. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if it still exists. It's a little pizza place, the kind where they have you know the broken up peanuts on the floor and all that kind of deal. Right? Try to be rustic. Let's yeah. just litter the floor. And uh, we're sitting in a booth. And one of our friends opened up the the uh, Parmesan cheese, which of course, as you know, Parmesan cheese it comes in one of those shaker things yeah. at the pizza place. It's like it's more sawdust than it is Parmesan. <laughs> and he put and he put it onto a onto a tablespoon. And he said, he said, I dare you to hold this in your mouth for ten seconds and then swallow it. <laughs> and he said, he goes, I'll pay you. Five dollars if you can do that. Ten seconds. Five dollars for ten seconds holding that in your mouth well, and then that's swallowing it. That was worth the work back in and 1983. Yeah, and he said, he said, oh, I'll totally do that deal. And so he takes that spoonful, puts it in his mouth, and of course 
over the course of 10 seconds, it absorbs every single last drop of moisture in his mouth. And before he could even try to swallow it, he just started choking. And he started he started hacking and jagging, and he, he was going to try to do it. And then finally, he just he, he yacked, and he coughed it all out on top of another friend sitting right across from him. It was the biggest spit take I've ever seen. And there was a couple on a first date in the booth next to us. I think we made their date. <laughs> they were laughing so hard. I, I think I think they had more entertainment than whatever movie they went and saw. Which they're was, married now and they have kids as old <laughs> as you guys were then. <laughs> Probably yeah. doing the same a lot kind of older. wacky crap. That's anyway, right. <laughs> all right, that's it for this week. We will see you guys next week. Thank you.